Okay, now it's time for some general feedback on the introduction. Uh, remember that uh, I'm going to be going through everybody's assignments one by one and giving you your individual feedback. But just in general, since uh, people tend to make the same uh, mistakes or do the same things well, I just want to point out a few of those now and then go and listen to your individual feedback. So this assignment was to write the title abstract and... Um, and introduction of a paper, I gave you the materials and methods, the results and the discussion. The reason that I did it this way is because I write these, uh, the title abstract and intro last. Usually when you're learning how to write, it's, uh, you know, you start with the title and then you move on to the intro. You don't want to do that because you need the data first to figure out where you're going. And the intro is there. Always keep this in the back of your mind. The intro is there to set up your conclusions. You want to lead the reader down the primrose path, so to speak. So let's start just going through your assignments. So let's see. This is a good start. Starts with forensic etymologies continuing continually expanding. A good rule of thumb is to start broad and then get more and more narrow. So since you already know what is going on in that paper, you're able to start with an entire oh, um, subject area like forensic entomology. This also gives the readers a clue what this is going to be about. Now you do want to be a little careful with adding in particular subjects here because while it does encompass what you're talking about it can also limit that so if there are other uh subjects that could be affected by what is going on in this paper make sure you add those if there's not and you really want to focus in on a particular group of people then add that this intro can change from uh, journal to journal. So here's just a quick aside, a little bit of a tip. When you go to publish something, you want to publish in a journal that has your audience. You want to publish it in a journal where the right people or the people you're trying to communicate with are actually reading it. So for forensic entomology, there are certain journals out there that forensic entomologists tend to keep an eye on, you know, forensic science journals, journal of forensic entomology, whatever. Medical entomologists don't necessarily read those same journals. Uh, bacteriologists have no idea what entomology journals are out there. So when you are choosing a place to publish your journal, you want to choose that before you write your intro because your intro needs to, to get, get the introduction or get the uh, attention of the proper people. So this is a great way if this is a paper exactly about forensics, yeah, development of Lucilia coriviridis, however the hell you say that, uh, that is uh, specifically for forensic entomologists. That's why this was written. So forensic entomology, this is a great start. Then it moves on to explain the basics of what's going on here. That's, that's an excellent next step. So you start with sort of broad, then you start to narrow down. Basically, you're trying to get the reader to ask the question before you answer it. In this case, the question was, we don't know how quickly this particular species of Lucilia develops. So you have to set the stage, so to speak, by saying forensic entomology is important. This is the basics of forensic entomology. Uh, and this is what we do. This is, uh, you can then cite it here. You, you need to cite it. Uh, I would err on the side of uh, using papers within the past 10 years. This is something where as you get older, it gets a little more annoying because you you think, you know, I'm still in college, uh, 1992, whatever, or this year, whatever is perfect. No, you don't want to use a paper that's, you know, 40 years old. You want to use something, at least one that is within the last 10 years that says the same information. And then you can supplement it with an older paper. So that's my general rule of thumb is if it is more than 10 years old, find a, a newer paper and add it to this list. It just shows the reader that this isn't something that just came out 40, 50 years ago and then we stopped learning about it. There are other things. Okay. Uh, so good here. Now, oh, another quick rule of thumb. When you have two sentences in a row that use the same uh, citation, you can just put one citation at the end of those two sentences. Basically, if you look at a citation, you assume everything before it is from that citation if it's in the same paragraph. It's, if it's a different paragraph, 
it needs a new citation. But right here, you see how it's two sentences, one right after the other, same citation. You could just get rid of this one and add one here. Uh, yeah, but again, this is a little older than 10 years, so I would find one that's a little bit newer and also cite that. Okay, for these reasons, good. So this first paragraph is great. It moves into, like, this is forensic entomology. This is why it's important. Uh, now let's go into this particular species. So you've set up the reader to say forensic entomology is important. Great. Now you need to make a case for this species. So you're saying it's the most co-abundant fly in the summer in Southwest Virginia. Great. That is showing that it is, in fact, there. And good job using the Diptera California Megnan there. Uh, then you want to you know explain that it's there. Um, despite clear abundance, there's no studies. Great. You're setting up a, a, a question. Look how important it is, yet we don't know why uh, or how quickly it grows. Uh, and then you are uh, leading the reader down the primrose path, so to speak. So great job there. Okay. Development of Lucilia corgiviridis. You want to be a little bit more specific in the title. You want it to be as uh, specific as possible. Always remember to use proper instars formatting. Remember, it is much easier to get used to using the formatting of the, the journal where this is going to be because it then becomes second nature. And I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have to sit down for hours and hours and reformat something that you could have done while you were writing it. So make sure to use proper instars format. Uh, a good introduction would be about a page or so long because that's how much time you need to set up all those things okay um also general rule of thumb when you have about a page of writing you need more than just one uh, citation really think about for a good jam-packed uh, paragraph. You want to err on the side of two to three citations per paragraph. And that's when we're talking if it's a five paragraph, um, five paragraph thing. Now, this particular intro is putting a lot of the materials and methods and stuff in it. Uh, you don't do materials and methods yet. That's for later. You're setting up why forensics is important, how it's used, why the money needs to go here. Again, think about the introduction as if you were talking to your boss or the department head or something, and you're asking them, I need $10,000. Why? Well, forensic entomology is important. We solve crimes. And there's this particular fly that nobody knows anything about, yet it's one of the most abundant out there. Uh, there's a bunch of cases that use it. We don't know anything about it. A bunch of people are going free. That's what you got to do. So this needs to be about twice as long and have at least, I would say, 10 uh, citations or 10 um, yeah, references. And whenever you do in-paper citations, always include the uh, references there because I need to know what they are. And I'll just give you practice. Oh, excellent. This is in uh, perfect... Uh, in stars uh, format, good. But again, just looking at this, this is a really short intro. It should be a full page, air on that side. And again, we're just looking at two citations, uh, and one of them is from the 90s. That's many, many years ago. So again, rule of thumb, 10 citations per page. Keep that in mind. Uh, population development. This is a little bit misleading for this paper here. Uh, you didn't really look at how the population as a whole develops. When you say population development, that is implying, that's a particular area of study. That's implying how populations themselves change as opposed to how individual species grow. So in population development, I would be looking at over a, a span of, say, 10, 20 years with hundreds of generations within that time period. This paper just looked at, say, a single clutch of eggs. That's not a population. So be very specific with your wording here, especially in the title. Okay. Uh, yeah. Really, uh, by getting under a uh, better understanding of the population development of Lucilia corioviridis, we are better able to determine the time of post-mortem in both humans and animals. Uh, time of post-mortem, that's sort of a strange way to say this. Uh, it should be the postmortem interval or time of colonization. If you have the citations and you've read enough of these papers, you get to know the wording there. Use the wording that is common in the industry. 
So that is one of the other parts of doing a lit search like this, is you learn what phrases and what words are used on a regular basis. It's like going, you know, to hang out with your younger siblings or your kids or your grandparents at their, at where they like to hang out. Can you imagine me going and hanging out with my grandparents and saying whatever weird, um, slang is being said right now, they would look at me like I'm insane. But if I go and I talk to them and use their same phrases, they understand what I'm talking about. Same thing is if I go to my uh, sister's junior high class, she teaches junior high, and I try to go in and talk like, like I did in the 90s, they would look at me like I'm nuts. Gen X, what the hell are you talking about? Right? Also, if I go in and I badly use whatever slang is happening at, they're going to roll their eyes at me. So, Part of this intro is to show that you understand what is happening in this particular field. It's actually really common to have people outside a field try to come in and write in a field and not use the words correctly. Use this process of coming up with your intro as a way to familiarize yourself with the common phrases, the common terms, and how things are said. Okay, this looks good. Remember, you want to left, right, justify. So when I say left, right, justify, you saw it on this previous one here. That's where you have this nice straight line on either side, both the left uh, margin and the right margin is nice and straight, rather than just one margin being straight, the left margin and the right being all jagged like this. So it should be left, right, justify. Development time and process of Lucilia Corioviridis. That's very good. Remember, again, that when you put Diptera California, you also need to put the author who first described it there in another set of parentheses, but otherwise good. Uh, let's see. Introduction. Sex and incredibly valuable tool in the field of forensic sciences. Great. Uh, that's a great way of introducing this. You're trying to introduce the basic um, concept. Good. Uh, this is a good length for a introduction. You need a few more uh, citations, so there's only two or three. And remember, um, again, like I told you a few minutes ago, if it's the same citation for one full paragraph, you can just put one citation at the end there. But if it's more than 10 years old, find a couple of other others. Now, Katz doesn't actually talk about the minimum PMI. He talks about something else. Be very careful in uh, what you are citing. So when you go into an area... Uh, into a certain journal, people who read that journal tend to be the people who are really, really well read in this particular area. So you want to make sure that the citations you use actually say what you, you're saying they say. Now, this minimum PMI idea, this is somebody very different, and this is a big um, argument that goes back and forth in entomology. So when you say something like cats, 1992, and PMI, he actually called it something different. So anybody who is well versed in this area will know that the second you use a citation that doesn't say what you says it says, we're not going to believe you anymore. There's no reason for me to read the rest of this because you didn't even know that cats didn't quite say that. That tells me you didn't read this paper. So you don't have to read an entire book or an entire paper to, to pull out information, but make sure you're very specific in what you cite. This is a really common thing, and this is actually something that I fall into all the time, where you're just like, I know this is said somewhere, I just got to find something that probably says it. Yeah, here's a textbook. Blah, ah, I'm done. Don't do that. that. That can get you in trouble. So go and find a paper, and again, if it's more than 10 years old, add a newer one, but... Um, yeah, add on to this and make sure it's actually saying what you're saying it is. Okay, this this paper, don't, don't say things like this paper is investigating. That's implied. We're reading the paper. Okay, you want to be a little more nuanced than that. Okay, um, I mean, this isn't technically incorrect, but it's sort of ham-handed, so to speak. Okay, oh, good job coming up with... Uh, Sloan and Gruner and Tabor. Those are good papers. Widener 2016 is very good. A great way. Remember when you start a sentence with a uh, genus and species, you always spell out the genus. All right. Yeah, that, that's a pretty good title. Lucilia Corriveris. Oh, good job using the author, the uh, um, 
order and family, growth rates from of a position to adult. Fantastic. This actually uh, speaks to exactly what is happening in this paper. So if you uh, looked at this paper, they're not doing you know stage by stage by stage. It's how long it takes to go from of a position to fully formed adult. That's it. So this actually takes away some of the uh, ambiguity of the paper. Good job there. Make sure there's another line underneath here, though, uh, and make sure to left, right, justify the intro. Oh, and this intro needs to be much longer. If your abstract is longer than your intro, you're in trouble. Rule of thumb. So again, about a page of intro is the bare minimum. More than one page is perfectly fine as long as you're not just BSing. Okay. Again, Cats 1992. Yeah. And that's a really popular one, but there are much newer ones that are better for that. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Joy at All, 2006. That's a pretty good one. Try to get something from this decade. Uh, this is the first study to gather data on the development. Yeah, this is a great way to end a uh, an intro, actually, because you're saying this is the first study. When you say something is the first study as well, it also covers a lot of problems. So you'll notice in this particular paper, there were a lot of issues, right? It was based, I think, on just one clutch of eggs. It uh, you, We couldn't get stage by stage developmental data. There's a lot of things wrong with this. However, saying that this is the first study shows that this has never been done before. You looked it all up. You couldn't find anything. So please uh, give me some, cut me some slack. It's the first time we tried this. That's a great, great ending to uh, an intro like this. Uh, always remember to italicize your uh, genus and species, even in keywords. Okay. Survey of Lucilia Corgivirda's life cycle. A survey, that implies going to a bunch of different places and taking a single point of data from all those different places. That didn't actually happen in this. So again, whatever words you use, make sure you're very specific about these things. Look up in uh, ecology or in biology or, in, or whatever textbooks and see how these different disciplines use these terms and then use those terms appropriately, okay? Let's see, okay, we got a good long abstract. Ooh, nice size, well, yeah, pretty good size of um, intro, moved into the materials and methods and stuff. Okay, uh, yeah, all right. So this looks pretty good, Family California, right? Remember, after you say Lucilia Curveritas, author, city-state, or author, uh, um, order family, like you did here. Uh, what about begins being proposed? Organisms are immediately attracted, such as insects. Uh, rephrase that, smooth it out a little bit. Uh, everything that you say needs to be as punchy as possible. Just bam, here's the information. Okay, good job here. You put postmodern interval and then you put the abbreviation right after it. That's the way you introduce a good abbreviation. Remember, we're, we're lazy. We always want to have abbreviations when possible. Again, rule of thumb, make sure you you add something else there. A uh, little known about the infamous Dipteran family. Don't use things like infamous necessarily. Uh, this is a qualitative um, phrase or qualitative word. And while it makes it a little bit more interesting, that is a personal preference. Because for other people, Lucilia uh, Corioviridis may not be infamous. Maybe they love it. Who knows? So again, every term you use, make sure you are using it for a reason. Uh, now, I, you know, like I said before, have a lot of English background. We do, that's how I learned in college and high school and whatever else. And so I tend to use these terms all the time as well. But that's a first pass. So I'll put them in there and then I'll try to find something a little bit more specific and do it again. Okay. Oh, good job spelling it out at the beginning. Nicely done. Native. Good. You're talking about Lucilia Corriveridis here. You're going on. Um... Uh, Better recognized as blowflies. Better known as blowflies would be a better way of saying that. Uh, the development of the different life stages of the family is understudied. Uh, well, not necessarily of the family. Whenever you say a, a phrase like this, saying it's understudied or, you know, here is a fact, prove it. So you need to prove that phrase. What I like to do is when I write everything out, you know, I'll, I'll cite while I write while I get stuff. But then I go through sentence by sentence and I make sure that if I'm putting a fact in that sentence, either it's something that I'm going to answer in my uh, paper or I have a citation for it. So every single sentence needs to have a citation 
somewhere. So I should be able to go through every single one of these sentences. So like here, you got this big, long, you know, three sentences, four sentences, it looks like. I better be able to go to Benneke 2001 and get all this information from it. Uh, I, be, I better be able to go into Grupta 2011 and find this information. So right here, I know that that isn't said in Widener 2016 because she doesn't talk about how the family is understudy because it's not. There are certain species that are, but the family is not. Again, remember, you're going to be writing to people who really know this literature. So make sure you're not stating things like this that can be easily disproven. If you lose somebody in the intro, you're going to lose. They're not going to believe your research. Okay. Let's see, because the species can only be found in abundance during the summer seasonal period in a certain area. Remember to be specific. Okay, so you might want to expand this intro a little bit longer. Uh, yeah, you need a little bit more information there. It looked like a lot right at the beginning because you had the materials and methods and stuff. Okay, so next. Development of Lucilia. Ah, nice. This is a way... Uh, that you can specify exactly what's happening for the reader without uh, saying a lot of words. So what I, what this implies is that you're using a single population in this particular area. So this leaves you, it covers your butt a little bit. So that's a really good job there. Uh, so what you're saying with this is since this is a limited population, it's a limited research project, we only did it in this one area, you're leaving the door open that maybe the development is going to be a little bit different if you get it in Texas or in Canada or in Virginia or somewhere else, right? So that's an excellent way of covering your butt. Really, writing papers is a lot of proving it, covering your butt, and then giving uh, some data without backing yourself into a corner. It can be very dangerous to in science to say something like, this is the end-all be-all, because guaranteed, like a year later, some upstart grad student's going to prove you wrong, and then you're embarrassed, and you have to fight him at a conference or something. You, you don't want to draw blood. All right, so good job. Remember to put the author. You put it down there, so that's excellent. Uh, put it in the title, too. Uh, development times. Remember to start your abstract with a, a background thing, an intro thing there. Forensic entomologists utilize Califord flies in their everyday studies and work. Okay, that's a pretty good way of putting that. Now, um, you might want to put another sentence or two of why they do that. Why is it important? Because, uh, yeah, like as a forensic entomologist, I could read this. But you're also trying to prove to the readers that you know what you're talking about. So, you know, expand that a little bit. Uh, so that's a good topic sentence. This should be the topic sentence for your next paragraph. Okay, uh, make sure you're citing all this. Because I don't think this entire, sen uh, entire paragraph comes from Tabor, right? And remember to use proper instars format when you have more than one author. Uh, double check what the in paper citations look like there. Spell out Celia Cora Virtus. Uh, stay away from things like lucky. Uh, just state facts right there. Save these qualifying terms like lucky for when you give presentations or you're trying to do community outreach. For science writing, you want it to be specific. For community outreach, when you're just talking to uh, the general public, then you can say lucky and happy and blah, blah, blah. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. It's pretty good length. Good job there. Okay, this is a good way of saying this. Development of the green bottle fly, Diptera califoridae in New Jersey. Uh, so whenever you do a um, common name like this, you still need to put the, uh, the order and family. Great. Be careful with something like this, because common names like green bottle fly, this can include a whole bunch of other different types of species. So if I'm looking specifically for Lucilia sericata, Lucilia cuprina, any of the other Lucilias, uh, Lucilia mexicana, all those, those are also called the green bottle fly. So this is actually causing an issue because I could pull this up and then I have to read to figure out that it's curry viridis and I don't want it. And then I'm cursing your name. So be specific there. Um, but if you want to use the common name, this is a great way to do it. Always put this Diptera California. Good. Remember, use um, format, correct format, left, right, justify it. Marvel stages, mini insects, or necrophages. Good. Good use of the term. I like it. 
Uh, does all of this come from cats? Uh, and also add in a few more sentences there. Break this up and do a couple of paragraphs. That would look a little bit better, a little neater. Good length for your intro. That looks really nice. Oh, 1940. Very good. So again, this is a really old paper, but sometimes those old papers are there. Back it up with some other newer stuff. Now, your last citation is here. All of this needs citations. All of this. So you're stating these cases. Prove it to me. Show that somebody actually looked at it. Okay, again, use proper formats. Good length. Ah, here are the references. Good. Now, if you are, remember, you want about 10 references per page. So you need seven more references to really back up your information here. Oh, good job using a 2020 reference. Nicely done. Let's see. Spell out the uh, Lucilia on that. The goal of the study. That's a little ham-handed way to say this. Smooth this out a little bit. You want to uh, you want the reader to come up with the the goal with the project by the end of the intro without you spelling it out. Basically, you're leading them down. Have you ever done that thing where you try to convince somebody to do something without telling them to do it? Yeah. Uh, so you, you like plant seeds and you suggest things and you present them with information and suddenly they're like, hey, we should do this. Yes, we should. What a great idea you had. You're trying to do that here. You're trying to get the reader to say, we need to test this because you're setting up all these things. Hey, you know, this shows up all the time and it's super important. Friends Against Homology is super important. Nobody's ever done this. By the end of this intro, I should be saying, we should test this. And you go, hey, by the way, we tested it. You're welcome. It's like a magic trick. Okay, so smooth that out a little bit. Make it a little bit more subtle. Okay, developmental lab reared, very good. So I like the saying lab reared because that is specifying that you did this in the lab. It is not field-based. As you go through a lot of this research, you'll see that there's a move towards field rearing of these things to try to approximate what's going on in the world. So this is a great indication that you are a little bit more up to date on the literature. So good job there. Good job using the full um, format for instars. Several species of blowflies, good. First group, good. Uh, PMI, blah, 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 good, 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 good. Okay, this looks really good. Uh, good length, very good length. Uh, you got one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe a couple of more references, but you might be able to get away with fewer, so that's good. Good job putting on that. Yeah, this looks really on point right here, so that's nice. Good, good, good. Okay, let's see. Good, good formatting. Excellent use of formatting. Criminal forensic entomology. That is an interesting way of saying it. We don't really call it criminal forensic entomology. We call it medico criminal entomology. Um, so you could just say forensic entomology. So again, make sure you're using the correct terms that we use. This, I, I understand what you're implying here, but it's a little bit not quite. So by using a term that's slightly off, I know that you're not coming from this area or you're not um, well versed or, or you didn't take a lot of schooling, say, in this area. So you, you kind of want to hide that a little bit. So make sure you use the right term. But otherwise, it's a great start right there. MPMI, good job um, identifying that. Oh, good job using two. I like that. This is a good length. Well done. Good, good, good. Okay, yeah. So it looks like much everything else is so it looks like pretty much everything else is straightforward make sure that you do um dipter california and the author there uh, good job don't italicize california because it's a family field forensics and interaction with humans remains one of the most important you want to be a little careful saying something is more important than another. I mean, I personally think it's the most important, but I'm also biased. So remember to, uh, if, if something is coming off as biased, take it out. Uh, just to err on the side of caution. Mostly because forensic entomologists or scientists in general uh, can get their feelings hurt a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a thing we do. So try not to um, make qualifying statements like that unless you have something to back it up. Let's see. So we only have one citation for this entire thing. You need more for that. And then 
all these things. This needs to be cited. So, so prove that. Remember, every time there's a break, uh, you have to put a new citation in and then put a new citation after the others. So cite everything in here. It's pretty good length for this uh, introduction. Uh, in a New Jersey study, don't write out like the full title and stuff like this. Uh, instead, just cite the paper. That's all. That's all you need to do. Just say Wagner or whatever. Okay, so um, yeah, you don't need to write it out totally like that because if I want to know what the title is, I can go to the references and see that. So in this case, you could say something like Widener, then uh, parentheses 2017, showed that uh, this happened. So remember, you're, you're trying to put the most information in uh, a paragraph as possible in the least amount of words. Okay. Cilia Coravirta is commonly known as a green bottle fly, a member of the family Califorti. Uh, it is conspicuously colored uh, species first described. You don't really need to put that sentence in there. I mean, you can just say it is green. It is a green bottle fly. I know it's in the family Californi because you put that up above, so you can take that out. Uh, I also know it's called the green bottle fly because you already put that above. Take that out. Cilia Coravirta is widespread. Just get rid of those sentences. If it's redundant, take it out and make sure every sentence is uh, needed to say what you want to say. Okay. So the Corey Veritas observed event little times. That's a pretty good title. Good job using Dipter 40. Remember the author. But um, because this particular paper only goes from egg to adult, you might want to be a little more specific because saying observed event little times, this is going to imply that it is uh, egg, larvae, all the different stages of larvae, the pupae and the adult. And it doesn't do that. Uh, good job putting uh, p-values in the abstract. Nicely done. Okay. This looks great. The format, pretty good length. Like it. Good, good, good. Uh, remember to put Deptera Califority after forming your Regina, Regina and the author there, just like you did above every time you have a new species. Good job there. Okay. Again, like I said before, uh, if you have two sentences that are from the same citation, you could just put the citation at the end of both those sentences instead of either, either one. Hey, cats. Uh, remember, you need to cite everything that's in this paragraph here so you know what's going on. Okay. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. All right. So that's the general uh, overview. Remember that I'll be giving you uh, individual feedback. So if you saw some things that I talked about just now that you didn't put in yours, just take them as a little bit more information. And then if you need a little bit more detail about exactly how to do uh, fix something or what really, really went well, listen to your own uh, individual feedback. All right. Let me know if you have any questions.